Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish. Welcome back to another installment of Betrayal in Antara, where we are leaving Cardone today. You may recall, if you were here for our last episode, that we found the Beast of Cardone. Um, turned out to be a Grulf, which are basically tall Ewoks. We helped that guy out, helped the town out. Got some very valuable arrows for our troubles, which is great. Did a lot of exploration through the woods, so our goal today is to go down and explore several of these other towns further south. There's Lavosha, Ormide, or Ormid, Raven, Malay. We want to hit all of those before we go to Takoro, especially since we have no idea yet whether or not any of these are going to have side quests that are going to loop back. Like, some of these may take us back to Waterfork, for example, or back to Cardone. So, we want to try and at least see all or most of those towns. Luckily, they're not super far apart. We actually saw Lavosha last time, at least from a distance. Oh, there we go. That terrain spawning in. I'm checking for dig sites over here, underground caches. Uh, of course, we start out tired. It's been that kind of day, folks. Happy Halloween, by the way. Merry Samhain. Whatever you're into. I am into... A little bit of daylight so I can see where I'm going. Please, game. Thank you. Uh. Yeah, we've been tired. So here we go. Lavosha. 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 It's just fun to say. Hmm. Nobody's interested. Okay, this is a fairly sizable little village. Check out the... Uh, the walled-in fields down here. And they have a shop. We we'll kind of wonder what's in here. Okay, they're going to be another one of these that has a pub rather than an inn. So we'll go ahead and hit that place up. And... Yep, don't see anybody we can talk to other than the bartender. Hey, bartender. Let's see. I don't see anything free lying around. In case you're just joining us, if you see me come into a new building like this that has one of these scenes, and I'm kind of like moving the mouse around, uh, you know, aimlessly, I promise that I'm doing something. It's because you come in here and sometimes there's free stuff lying around. Bread, cheese, wine, all you really need, according to the French. Hmm. Nothing back there. Okay, let's see what they sell at this shop. We finally found a shop that sells arrows, and I am so pleased. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. They're there to be taken, right? I mean, come on. They wouldn't just leave them lying out where anyone could get to them. If they weren't meant to be taken, if they weren't for sharing. These are sharing possessions. Okay, swords, swords, oil, ah, oh, whetstones, thank goodness, because we needed some of those. We were really hurting for whetstones last time. I'm going to buy three because we go through them pretty quick, so this is what the communists want. There we go. Okay, so his sword's at 84, her sword is at 70. So you can see that they they got a little bit worn down. Hey, but see, it jumps up to 93. And... Hmm. 91. Thank you, William. Man, his repair skill's gotten quite good. And we can sell this shield as well that we've been carrying around for a little while. Hey, hey. Do we have anything else that needs to be sold? Ah, yes. Get rid of this Chalen Cutlass. Nice, and that more than pays for our whetstones. Plus, it gives us a little bit of inventory space back. So, huh. He also sells Steadfast Tonics. Should we sell those too? Huh. 
You know, we haven't really been using a lot of potions, and we have amassed quite a few of them. Um, I feel like, perhaps, if, I, like, if I'm just gonna sell them anyway, we're not really hurting for cash. Maybe we should give some of them a shot. At the very least, we should try them and just see what they do to kind of confirm their functions. Okay, they don't want to talk to us either. Now, come on, you've got like a whole little side road thing going off. You have to talk to us. There's got to be somebody in there. Ooh. Hmm. The barred windows and reinforced door suggested this was a jail cell. Apparently, nobody was currently serving time. Okay, interesting. I wonder why that's there, though. Will somebody be serving time? Will it be us? Certainly not for breaking and entering or petty larceny. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because if you've been with us before, then, like, you know that I, I admit to my own flaws, one of which is absolutely that I will... Uh, I am I am too thrifty with my health potions for sure, and I tend to get to the end of the game and have like nine thousand mega elixirs. Um, you know when throughout the game there was at least a hundred and fifty times when a mega elixir would have been useful, and it's like no, I might need it one day. Yes, exactly. I will I will absolutely need four hundred of this in order to complete the game, so I can't spend any of them, even though I've got. 1200 you know so i'm trying to be less frugal with them and since money is not currently a going concern i think that we can at least kind of play with them a bit william was just about to knock when he heard thumps and hollers coming from the back the party circled around the house to discover a man about their own age practicing feints and parries against a stuffed dummy the man saw them and lifted his epee in salute "'Greetings, Master Swordsman,' William called out cheerfully. "'I suppose... I'm sorry, that wasn't calling out. "'Greetings, Master Swordsman. <clears throat> "'Not a master by a long shot. "'Just apprentice swordsmith at the trusted arms. "'On my days off, I practice the art. "'Gotta know how to fence if you're going to craft weapons for a living. "'Today I'm working on my attack styles.' "'Aaron stepped forward and studied the hanging dummy, "'stuffing coming out of it in several vital regions.' I didn't realize there were different ways of attacking. Ah, uh, see, this is why you don't have the sword skill. You don't, This is why he only uses staves, folks. The apprentice eagerly filled him in. Sure there are. Different swords are best suited for different attacks. A long sword's good for swinging, slashes. Broad swords have the weight for hacking, and rapiers provide the reach for thrusts. Hey, uh, if you have the time, why don't we train together for a few hours? Ooh, hey. Yes, pointy, fatal golf. Okay, but imagine just for a moment, if you will, here's here's something free for your next world building session. Um, a guy with a bunch of swords and a caddy, and like a dude follows him around with it, and he's like, quickly, give me my nine iron. And the dude like throws him the big long, you know, like a claymore, and the dude catches it and just swings and lops some orc's head off or whatever. Okay, but then even even funnier, juxtapose that with, like, the quiet, overly polite enthusiasm of golf fans. So, like, somebody just mercilessly cutting his enemies down with a variety of swords that his assistant hands him. And then on the sidelines, everybody's just like... Oh, yes, very nice. That is wonderful. That's, that's a good show. Good show. Anyway, this sounds like a free skill up. So, absolutely, let's practice with him. I bet he's going to increase our melee skill. Oh. Aaron's companion's not an encouragement. All right, you're on. I'm sure I can learn a lot from you. The apprentice gave Aaron some pointers on how to block with his staff. Then the two young men squared off. After a long while, Aaron was hot and tired, but well pleased with his increased skill in the art of defense. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, so not melee, but defense instead. That kind of makes sense. That makes sense. He's telling it that there's different ways to attack, then you need to know how to defend against all of them. Wow. 
weirdly, somehow Aaron was the only one who got a bonus. I'm going to assume we have no control over that and that Aaron was automatically selected for, like, narrative reasons. Because, of course, that was written in there, like, showing him how to block with his staff. So this may be a hidden way to give him a plus five bonus to his defense because he's generally going to have the lowest defense. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be the case following the, the text. Ironically, his defense is now the same as William's. Okay, well, I'm sure that exhausted that. Alright, let's swing around and check out this part of town. Party is fatigued and needs to rest. No. A white-haired, handsome woman greeted the travelers. Welcome, I am Irene Ampersand. Meal, come here and meet some newcomers to our town. The stately, bald gentleman joined his wife at the door. Why don't you all come in? We're just about to sit down to our supper. You're more than welcome to join us. The next two hours passed quickly. Irene and Miel were kind and gracious, offering simple yet delicious food and lively conversation. They listened eagerly to their guests, asking a myriad of questions about their travels, the people they'd met, and the things they'd seen and done. The travelers sighed contently over ginger crisps and dessert wine, thanking their hosts for a most delightful evening. Uh, nobody's skills went up. Okay, I have no idea what happened. I'm going to assume that they fed us so that we are not hungry, and then a little time passed or something like that. We don't seem to have gained anything mechanically productive or tangible out of it, but that was a lovely little encounter and or diversion. Huh. See, it's the little stuff like that, the little flavor that brings the world to life and engages you. I mean, I can dig up a magic longsword out of any old field or, you know, I can meet a demon on any crossroads. What's really important is Irene and Meal, the people of the land. Nobody wants to move. Why not? Why not? Why does nobody want to talk to us? What kind of town is this? Ah. A fair-haired joyman sat strumming a lute and singing softly to himself. Aaron asked if he'd mind if they listened in on his song. Oh, I'm not really singing anything. I'm trying to work out the lyrics for a ballad about the Cyrilin. Is that the ship that went down a long time ago? Aaron asked. Yeah, it is. A hundred years ago, the Emperor Benarin built the Cyrilin as a wedding gift for his daughter and their intended groom. He was wrecked on its maiden voyage. The princess and her beloved drowned. Well, hmm. A tragic tale indeed. Yes, could be quite moving. If only I can finish it in time to perform it at the festival in Tikoro. I seem to be stuck on this one verse. Aaron leaned over his shoulder to look at the sheets of music. Well, maybe we can help you. I've written a few songs in my time can't seem to remember the name of the shipwright who built this Cyrilin. I'm sure it'll come to me eventually. Oh, and that's all there is to that conversation? Huh. Okay. Hmm. Well. Uh, okay, that, that seems, since the way that it cut off, I'm gonna assume that's probably some kind of little side quest. We need to find that name and then come back and talk to this guy. Because I am seeing a pattern in the way that the game often delivers these sort of side objectives. So, yeah, we need to keep an eye out for that information. The locked barn door wouldn't budge. Well, we know how to deal with that. Fireball! <laughs> oh, uh, I kid. But no, really, if we have to if we have to get in there, then we will. Okay. Hmm. Oh, was there? Hmm. Let's see. Hey yeah. Oh, there is. In through the back door. Oh. Oh, the back door is cosmetic only. Hmm. <sighs> Unfortunate. 
Okay, that is every building, though. Well, I'm going to try a couple of these buildings again just because, like, maybe it was a time thing. Like, it was too late in the evening, and that's why they didn't want to talk to us. No, nah, it doesn't seem like it. Yes, fake doors. Somebody's installed fake doors all over this ghost town. And I don't see permits anywhere. This place is full of... of... Lavosha violations. Full Lavosha violations. Get it? Get it? Ah. <laughs> uh... Oh. Uh. Uh. Oh, hey. Hey, now. I don't know why I do this right before combat, because the game quite helpfully saves right before a battle, so. Yes, thank you for your overly polite enthusiasm. <laughs> My terrible joke. Get them. Hiya. Sometimes they choose the strangest paths to enemies. Let's see. We don't have any new spells this time other than we have Winter's Kiss, which we didn't look at last time. Protects target from fire damage, so we can see the icons are pretty much the same. So, yeah, it is what we thought. It's the same thing as Aura of Insulation. It's just for fire instead of electricity. Not bad. That is a good new spell. Um, let's see. What's going to be most useful here? Geyser automatically hits. Let's, since right now we're not doing anything, um, supremely important, as in we've got places to rest and, and no, like, known boss fights coming up, um, Let's focus on his spell accuracy and see if we can continue to rank that up. Which means lots of hot, cheap hotfoot spells. So far I've not noticed a correlation between, like, um, how much stamina we spend to cast the spell versus how much of a stat increase we get if we successfully hit with it, if that makes any sense. Because I could see that in, in some games, um, I think that they do kind of um, force you to cast the spell sort of at your level, rather than underscaling it or undershooting, um, in order to spam it. Like, they don't want you to farm it for stat increases, and so they make it to where... Um, you're only going to get experience or a stat increase or what have you for doing it um, if you do it at a level or an amount that is appropriate to whatever your spellcasting ability is for that part of the game. But that doesn't seem to be the case in Antara. I'm not sure exactly how the game determines when you get a stat increase for doing something like casting a spell. Um, it may just kind of be a dice roll, and the odds may be more in your favor if you do spend more stamina casting the spell, or if you attack a higher level target, uh, you know, or that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not 100% certain, and I don't really know if there's a way to tell without just diving into the code. But so far, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Okay, hey... Money, 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 money. And an armorer's hammer, which will helpfully remind me to repair. Good. We will go through this bread, hopefully, before it goes bad. Since we will need to rest and we're running low on rations. Uh... Hmm, how much of this can we take? Not much. Really? Oh, you don't have room for... S well, it does take up two columns, technically. There's no way he's going to have one. Okay, let me go ahead. See, now we're down on armorer's hammers as well. Hmm. Let me... Oh, wait a minute. Actually, yeah, her repair's 32. 
Let me give this to her and have her repair her own armor because it's not that badly damaged anyway. Oh. Hey, there we go. Repaired it and we got a skill increase. See, that was the right thing to do. Okay, now she can carry a little bit and that rope is stacking, so that's good. Um, let's take 100%. Because that uh, weapon shop is literally right there. So I'm just going to go back over here and sell this stuff rather than leave a map marker and come back later. That seems silly when it's right here. Uh, let's see. He's not actually... Oh, nope. Wait. Fool. You gave him a sword to carry. Good, he does buy armor. He's selling shields, but not actually, like, body armor, and so I wasn't 100% certain if he would buy that. I'm glad that he does. Okay. This might take me three trips, because the armor is bulky. And, oh, she might be able to carry some. Yes, excellent. That will be it, though, and then we'll come back. Yeah, so it is going to take three trips. Let me do this real quick. Bear with me. And then I believe that I saw a side road down there. That'll be fun to explore, because side roads usually lead to either a monster encounter, which may have some treasure, a treasure chest, one of those... Uh, excavatable caches, caches of buried treasure, um, or sometimes a dungeon. Let's find out what this one is. Get whatever, we will get to it. Ah, oh, crud, okay. Literally a minute too late. We were, we did that thing where we ran up and he was turning the lights off trying to close as we came up to the door. He's like, no, 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 no. Closing time. We're closed. Yeah, I got distracted and haven't used my whetstones yet, but I need to repair them too. There we go. And listen, the bodies are not everywhere. They're not everywhere. They're just, you know... They're... You know, they're here. They're 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 visible. Okay, eighty-eight. Ninety-four. I'm going to continue to let Kaylin carry the uh the quote unquote good sword. Okay, I don't see anything interesting over there. Hmm. Huh. That's interesting. Is this just a shallow area? No? Oh, okay. Oh, it's like stair-stepping down. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we did find a treasure chest, which is great. Let's see. No obvious traps. Huh. I, I, I always hate the phrase, no obvious traps. That's like when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons... And someone says, roll a perception check. And they're like, hmm, you don't find anything. Like, don't I? Don't I? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. See? Ah! Uh. <laughs> Welcome back to the stream, Wide Potion! Everybody, please welcome Wide Potion back to the stream. The, the most important party member. This is our favorite character in Betrayal and Antara. Wide Potion is very good. Oh man, there's three of these. Ooh, hmm. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Huh. Huh. Hmm. We have three party members, and we were just talking about what to do with some of these potions. Oh, well. 
Hmm. Invisible Wall says, no, we cannot travel down that beach, so we'll head on this way. Leaving Lavosha behind. So next is Ormide, I think. Ormede, Ormide, Ormedi. <sighs> like, my English brain wants to call it, just, just say Ormede. But because everything around through here is like Italian or at least romantic, um, I, you know. But then you have things like Ravenne is probably like, see, I'm, I've been calling it Raven. Um, and if this is Italian, like Panizzo and Sortiga and Espresso Legano, Imazzi, then this is probably Ravenne, like Penne, the pasta. Um, but then you have Mille. That's that's not Italian. Water Fork is not Italian. So this is very much like Antara is a generic mishmash fantasy world. Hmm. Where, like, there, there was a plan. An attempt was made, I guess is the best way to say it. Ooh. Interesting. Hello. Strange building in the middle of nowhere. What are you? Let's find out. Okay, now in case this is a temple, do brace yourself for that burst of loud choral music. I apologize. Yep, okay, it's a temple of core. Hey! Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so... Now this is actually really great because I'm, I'm glad that there's more than one temple because the other temple of Kor that we've found so far has been an Espreza and that was the only one. And that's a long way away, y'all, because you remember at the beginning of Chapter 2, end of Chapter 1, when we were down here in Panizzo and I had to go all the way over there to get our weapons and armor blessed while we still had a load of money. And thankfully, once blessed, they stay blessed. But I mentioned at the time, uh, we will eventually come across more weapons and armor. And then what will we do? You know, when we switch from like a long sword to a broad sword or something, um, we're going to have to get it blessed again because the blessing is not going to transfer to the new weapon. That's not how that works. <sighs> okay, game, I get it. There we go. Checking over here where there's like thick underbrush and stuff to try and not miss any of those dig caches. Is it excavatable or is it excavable? I don't know. God, English is just not really the best. Okay, hmm. Interesting, that little forest there is not on the map. Huh. How close are we to... Okay, it's around the bend down kind of at the center. So it's going to be over this way. Hmm. Okay, well, it's not walls the way that the regular forest is, so it may not be that big of a deal. Unless there's like an ambush or something. I did find... Yeah, here's a chest, though. Oh, and I think I can see the town, too. Alright. Use that assessment skill. Uh-huh. It does not appear to be trapped. Okay. So, it's like... Uh, God, I hope not. Or don't speak that evil into the world. The last thing we need now is fairies. Especially on Halloween. But the language seems to be, if they say there are no obvious traps, then that is telling you that they did not find any, but it doesn't mean there aren't any there. They just kind of failed their assessment check, uh, versus it does not appear to be trapped, tells you that, like, they specifically did not find any traps. Of course, locked chests generally aren't trapped. Hey... Box cache. Different from floor cache because it's not on the ground. And some leather armor which sells for way more than a leather jerkin. That's very nice. Uh, yeah, not really seeing anything, so... Y'all help me watch because, of course, I'm usually... Like, I try to search to the sides when I'm just running in a straight line like this. Wait here. Oh. I thought I saw something up ahead. 
We could be walking right into an ambush. My girl, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, when I'm running straight ahead, my eyes are focused like in the middle of the screen. So y'all have to help me check my periphery. Because you are better at that. And you have spotted many a chest that I did not see on the first go. Pirates. Okay, we are getting ready to... Um, let me look at his spell casting. Okay, his water is 40 now. Self and ally and resist are both up at 14. And they're zooming up because they are the only ones that are currently ticked for improvement. So, let's try... Hmm. We determined Geyser has a slightly higher maximum damage than Lightning Bolt, but it costs way more stamina. And the reason why is because, even though it is an always-hit line-of-sight spell like Lightning Bolt, um, it quenches flaming weapons, cancels active fire-based spells, and also affects targets that are not carrying metal, whereas Lightning Bolt deals 40 points for 12 stamina, which is much better, but it has no other special properties, and they have to be holding a metal weapon or wearing metal armor or something. So, um... That, I believe... See, like, right here is where it starts. This is the default, so that's two. So this is the highest that we can go. Oh, oh, whoa, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the stamina cost. You mean the skills. Uh, no. 40 is currently the cap, and the reason you see some at 45 is because um, we got a permanent bonus to that skill that put us over the cap. So this, you'll see right there, maximum value 40. This also says maximum value 40, but we're at 45 of 40. And that is because um, as the game goes on, that maximum increases. We're in chapter two, so it has not increased yet. And it seems like, I, I guess that, in, that means it's not going to increase once per chapter. It might be every other chapter, like maybe every odd numbered chapter or something. Um, but then we got like a permanent plus five to these two is why we have that. Anyway, so this is going to be, since these pirates are carrying metal swords, this is going to be a better use of our stamina. Absolutely. If y'all have got any questions about the game this far, because you maybe missed some streams, or you are new to the series, or you just forgot because that happens to me all the time, goodness knows, then please feel free at any time to ask me, and I am all too happy to explain. And don't forget, too, that uh, hopefully you are already following me here on Twitch, or if I'm very lucky, you are even subscribed. Um, but you can also catch my other social media over on Twitter, on uh, Facebook and Pillow Fort, and, importantly, on YouTube. So go over there, Follow me on YouTube, and you can find the VODs for this entire series and for all of my series, and you can watch back um, episodes so that you can catch up in case you missed something. All right, well, that was pretty clean. Uh, it used a lot more stamina from him than I wanted it to, but his spell accuracy and his spell casting have gone up. That's at 26 now, which is amazing. Excellent. Can't learn a new spell yet, but it looks like if this whole thing is going to fill up, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of magic yet to learn. And we also know that as our skills in these other ones increase over time, it unlocks new combinations. So we have quite a few more spells waiting for us, I'm sure. We know at least that Emulsify and Quicksilver are out there minimum. So there's two that we know of to be on the lookout for. That guy almost got away, but not quite. I'm glad. Okay, we'll go ahead and snap up this fish. And then this other stuff. Uh, I am going to leave a treasure marker here because we don't know what kind of um, shop is going to be in Ormede. And I'm just going to have to settle on a pronunciation, so y'all will have to forgive me. Like I said, Antara seems to be one of those kind of like a, a mishmash of different fantasy languages or real-world languages and fantasy made-up words. Oh, thank you. 
See, I get caught up in the narration. 92%. So what that means is basically the rules are made up and the points don't matter anyway. There we go. Unfortunately, I can't repair their armor, but it's in pretty good condition. Didn't really get hit that time. That was, like I said, that was a fairly clean battle. And this looks like... Uh, an NPC being trapped or blockaded by some enemies. Let's see what we can do to help them out. But yeah, because, as I said, it's it's all made up anyway and doesn't matter, so we're going to have to uh, just, like, pick a pronunciation for some of these names and deal with it. Okay. We have a whole stack of these. Drink all eight of them. There. There. See, we never use these. We should. Okay, now I can go ahead and immediately follow that up with a lightning bolt. These pirates are they're pretty tough. I mean, look at these guys, right? That guy's taken quite a bit of damage and did not go down. So since there's four of them and three of us, I want to take at least one of them down as quickly as possible so that then we can start ganging up on the remaining ones. Ouchie. Dislike. There we go. Hey. Alright. Reluctantly, we will rest and recover stamina. You're going to hit that guy. So that Kalen can come in and flank him. Hey. There we go. Uh, I'm going to rest again. That'll give us another lightning bolt before it taps back into his health. Because, of course, as his health decreases... Um, I mean... Let's go ahead. There we go. Um, then his uh, his skills are going to get worse as well. His defense has already gone up in this battle, though. That's great. So we want to keep their stamina up and not have their health deplete. That is very important. Okay, since we do have 12 stamina, let me hit this guy. And then he can go back to resting while Kaylin and William do the heavy lifting. Hey, there we go. This works out. That way he can rest for the remainder of the battle. Oh, well, which turned out to only be one turn. Hey. Okay, sure. What went up? His defense. Nothing. Must have been his something. Okay, I guess it was just his defense then. Great. And, ooh, hey, another one of those spell potions. And who is carrying the, there we go, Essence of the Wind. This is probably not going to stack. I think that they stack in fives. Yeah, okay, well. No problem. All of this ale could be used to make Fidali paste. If we care to walk back to um, Water Fork. Alright, and there's Ormeed right there in front of us. So hopefully they have a shop and then we can grab this stuff and not worry about it. Won't be lying there for long. Uh, let's see what this guy has to say. He's got a cart with him. Whomst art thou? Greetings, fellow traveler. Good day, my lords. The name's Mackie. The contents of the wagon before you comprise the sum total of my roving emporium of exotic merchandise. Well, hello to you too. Listen. You're right, but there's an NPC right here. So I, I just want to talk to him first. What, is that a hat? It's almost like part of his hair. I couldn't hardly tell. He looks like Jotaro. Do you mind if we have a look at your wares? My sole purpose in life is to provide you with the opportunity to do just that, young sir. Lol. Browse all you like and sing out if something suits your fancy. Oh, hey. Oh, all right. Check it out. Man, I wonder if he's going to show up later, like since we saved him from the blockade or something, if he's going to travel around and be available, because look at this. He's got a little of everything, and generally speaking, merchants that we have encountered will... Yeah. <laughs> you picked up on that too, right? <laughs> that wasn't quite fourth wall breaking, but that did seem like a, a kind of a nod to, yep, I only exist so that you can browse my wares. Um, but merchants, like, whatever they carry, whatever they are selling is also what they will buy. 
So that means that this guy, he's selling arrows, which is great. So now we found two places that sell arrows. But he's going to buy weapons, he's going to buy armor, he's going to buy items and potions, because he's got the oil and the herbal powder here. Um, and he will buy utility items, things like pickaxes and stuff, because he's selling rope. So the only thing that he probably will not buy from us is jewelry. And we can even try that. Oh, okay. He will. He will. He will actually buy that as well. Cool. Oh. Oh, he won't buy armor. Oh, man, but he's he's got shields. I'm going to get rid of some of these pickaxes. Because we have not used pickaxe one yet. And... One stack of rope is more than enough. This will clear up a little bit of inventory space, which is wonderful. I'm going to hang on to our drums because I think that we did find a shop back in Pionda on the other side of the mountains where um, we could buy drums. But these drums, um, even though they haven't come in handy in a while, we've only used them one time, uh, they were a gift so I'm going to hang on to them in case we need them again for something else. These have been pretty rare, and we've only found one place where we could buy them, and then it was only the emerald ones, not the sapphires. So I do want to hang on to that as well. Uh, let's see. Okay, I don't think he has anything that we need to sell. We want to keep all of his stuff. I do appreciate that, like, now we have finally mastered uh, the mercantile inventory exchange system, and so it's like, um, we can, I appreciate that the game does permit you, if you know that you can do it, uh, to access the character inventory while you're in a shop, so we can do things like repair our equipment and then immediately go back to the shop. We don't really need this wine. Will you buy that? Yes, okay, good. Well, that's another little bit. And, yeah, we have like three stacks of fishing poles, too. Actually, screw that. Let's get rid of these fishing poles. Because we've used one fishing pole the entire game, and then everywhere else that we have attempted to even um, fish, it's been like, this doesn't seem like a great spot. Okay, so we need armorers, hammers... Once again, I'm going to buy three hammers, just like we bought the whetstones. That should do us for a while, I hope. Yes, that's true. Yeah, and then we, we fished up a, uh, a shovel as well. Uh, you know what? This emerald, I kind of want to hang on to it. And the reason why is it's represented by an emerald, but it was described as um, that the Contuso lady taking a ring off of her finger. So I don't know if it is just treasure, if it's just a, re a monetary reward for completing that quest and like making peace between the Contusos and the, um, what were they called? The Venitsos, v Violetas, some, I don't know, something with a V. Um, so anyway, I want to hang on to this, and if we find our way back to Midova, I before we sell it, since it takes up so little space, I want to hang on to it and see if we can show it to what's his name, um, uh, our, our Paolo, yeah, our guy Paolo back in Midova, and see if he says anything, because we might still have left that quest hanging a little bit. Safe journey, Mackie. May the roads be kind to your feet, my lords. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm glad to have met him. I hope that he shows up again. And here we are in Ormede. Okay, now let me go ahead and I'm gonna have her repair her own armor. No? Okay. Yeah, he's the one who really got hit, so... Oop. I don't think Aaron's armor needs repaired. Yeah, okay. He's He's good. Uh, no. I'm, he did not when we first met him, so like his default inventory all fit on one page. But then, yes, you did see a blue arrow after we spoke to him. Hello again, fellow wanderers. What can I do for you today? As you can see, my little shop on wheels is always open, come rain or shine, fair road or foul. There we go. Do you mind if we have a look at your wares? 
So what happens is, yeah, like now there's a blue arrow because he will sell back all of the things that we sold to him. Safe journey, Mackie. Oh, right on time. Is there an inn? I think I see an inn. I think I see an inn. Can we make it before we get tired? Uh... This is, yes, that's, that's the correct sign. Hey, excellent. Oh, see, and look, there's what I was talking about. Shing. They'll never miss it. <laughs> and then we can sell it to Mackie. Hmm. The jolly man with the round face introduced himself. Nom's the name. I'm right pleased to meet you. I see you've noticed the Henne's breath claim to fame hung right here on the wall. These are the very same cards used by the Brothers' line when they stopped for refreshment at this very inn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, true. They, they just had it, like, sticking out where someone could trip over it. Honestly, I'm doing them a favor because we saved them a lawsuit. Someone could have badly cut their foot or worse, their ass because it was propped against a bench. Okay. And an ass lawsuit is, like, the worst kind of lawsuit. William edged toward a vacant table on the other side of the room. Isn't that interesting? Uh, now, if you'll just excuse us. Nom didn't even pause to draw breath. Seeing as I'm what you might call the local historian around these parts, I feel it behooves me to tell you newcomers the tale. William sat down. Uh, we might as well make ourselves comfortable. This could go on all night. As you no doubt already know, the Line Brothers were adventurers, heroes of the Golden Age of the Empire. They spent one night in Ormede, planning to set sail the next morning for parts unknown. A local card wolf suggested a friendly game of cards. They played well into the night, and the brothers' money flowed across the table like it was sloping downhill. Finally, the card wolf drained the brothers' purses. He was standing to take his leave when the cleverest of the three, Merle, challenged him to one last game. I'm assuming that a card wolf is their fantasization of the term card shark. Merle staked all the gold on the table against his bejeweled dagger, his brother Vax's diamond ring, and his brother Fontaine's sword with emeralds on the hilt. The card wolf was interested, but first he wanted to know just what kind of game Merle proposed. Merle took three cards from the deck, the exact same three cards that you see there on the wall. He said, this is a game of skill. I will shuffle the cards, then lay them on the table face down. You tell me which is the Empress, and our belongings are yours. Well, the card wolf eagerly agreed, confident of his sharp eyes and keen wits. After a few practice hands, Merle shuffled for the final deciding game. The cards moved faster and faster, sliding across the table in a blur of color. The card wolf's eyes twitched in a frenzy as he followed the motion, but when Merle's hands stopped... The card wolf smiled. Good try, my friend. There were a couple of tricks that almost threw me. However, the Empress is right here. The card wolf victoriously flipped the card on the far left. His triumph was short lived. It was the Jester. The card wolf jumped back, his hand falling to the hilt of his sword. Before it cleared the scabbard, Fontaine's blade pressed into his gullet. Merle pulled his dagger and cut open the card wolf's sleeve cards fluttered from the slit fabric. I am so disappointed. My game was entirely fair, but I figured you for a cheat since the third hand. The brothers scooped the gold into their pouches and left the inn. Tomorrow they'd be on the high seas in search of excitement, and just as well for Ormede was beginning to bore them. Aaron's eyes shone. And those cards are the same ones Merle tricked the card wolf with. Wow! Nom pulled a deck of cards from his bag. Yes, indeed. And now, if you'd like, I can demonstrate the very same game for only ten burlas a round. Just lay down your burlas and we'll begin. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so that was a very long story just for him to be like another gambling dude, I guess. Uh, you know, we haven't gambled in a while. It's just ten burlas. I'm I'm going to play a hand because since he had this really long story to go with it, 
this might actually be something that increases our gambling skill, which we haven't seen in a while and also haven't used. Yeah, it's just ten burlas. Okay, don't let me play more than one hand. Aaron put ten burlas on the table. Nam shuffled, laid out the cards, and waited for Aaron to pick the Empress. All right, y'all. Left, middle, or right card? Which one do y'all think is the Empress? Huh. Let's see, what did he say in the story? It was the it was the far left card, I think. So it's probably not that one, the right? All right, let's pick the right card and see. Here's hoping. Knock on wood, cross my fingers. Sorry, son, that's the jester. Um, flipped over one of the other cards, revealing the empress. Care to try again? Nah, nah. <laughs> Aaron dug into the money bag, but William prudently stayed his hand. Not a good idea, Aaron. You might as well toss our money into the sea. Thank the nice man for his story, and let's be on our way. <laughs> well, and that makes sense because William has the highest gambling skill. He knows better. A swarthy man shuffling cards paused to flash a toothy smile at the companions. Hello, good people! You're just in time! The cards have been getting cold and I'm itching for a game of Diamondback! Ah, uh, this is the normal gambler. They return the smile. And how much are you willing to lose to scratch that itch? Oh, I don't know, the man answered with feigned nonchalance. Say, 50 burlas a hand? The man shuffled the cards and prepared to deal. No. So this is just the regular. Oh, Hannah lives in innocence. We're all true wisdom stuff. Oh, no. He gave us laughter, tales and dance, and music in our hearts. Since Hannah gave us tavern songs, a drink is only fair. But Hannah's far too young to drink. So I guess I'll drink his share. Well, I bought them a cup, but they haven't turned up. So the day that I thought I'll just look in her eye and say, Hey, where were you with a man for the brew? But I guess I'll be drinking their share. I think that that might be another verse to a song we already heard in another tavern. I appreciate that because that does seem like an old-timey drinking song. Like, they're, they're actually pretty well written and fairly well performed, and it's always a treat when we find one of those. Alright, I'm way back here in the back. Let's see. Huh. We probably do need some rations. We've only got 17. We have been going through our bread and our fish, which is great, but this stuff will spoil. So, as much as I hate to for that price. I was trying to drag it over here onto the shop inventory. There we go. That should do us for a while. And now, let us rest. Ooh, oh, that's right, because he, <laughs> he lost some health, so. Noom. Around and around and around it goes. Where it stops. Uh, yes. All right, there we go. Excellent. Okay, we ran through the entire town. Let's stop at the shop here and see. Oh. It is morning. What do you call this? Look, what do you call this? Oh, hey. I know what I call this. I call this buried treasure. Hey, 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 hey. <gasps> nice. Is that? Oh, it's just regular chainmail. Okay, well, that's, not... that's still fine. Well, who can? Somebody can carry it. There. I thought for just a second, I got really excited because I thought that that was Montari Chainmail. And that would have been super cool, especially because that Temple of Kor is right around the corner. We could even have gotten it blessed. Hmm. And that is definitely a big upgrade from regular chainmail. Because that Montari chainmail is the best armor that we have found so far by a long shot. 
by a country mile. Here we go. Okay. Uh, this looks like ah oh, flawless stones. Flawless stones. A jewelry shop par excellence. Okay. Uh, now see the good shops, like the ones that sell jewelry and magic items, never have anything free lying around. Of course, this Karen over here is like. Well, I was about to say is watching us like a hawk to make sure we don't steal anything, but they look like they might be stealing something. Doesn't it kind of look like it? Like, there's a basket over this person's arm, and I guess you could conclude it's a shopping basket, but am I reading too much into that? Does that not look like they're putting it up their sleeve? Kind of? Huh. So no, nobody will notice. They have so many shiny stones. That's why they're out in a bowl, like fruit for guests to take. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just like I do every morning. I get up, I go down to the market, and you know, I stop by the, I stop by the jewelry store, and I pick up my, <laughs> my weekly supply of, of glittering sapphires and and garnets. Yoink. Goodness gracious. All right, what do you sell? Hmm. Okay, well, this is interesting for a number of reasons, not least of which is because we have had most of these items in our inventory at some point and have sold them, and they've never been at 100% except for, I think, one pearl one time. So now we are getting to see kind of what the actual market value of these items is because they never sell for this much. And I am sure that that is because our haggling skill is also not really up to snuff. Because that is the one that's, it's not glitched, but it's just like really hard to raise. So, um, and I, I think it is supposed to look like a face. It seems like it to me. I mean, I see two eyes and nose holes and kind of cheekbones and like teeth down there. It looks a, kind of like a skull. Yeah. And this is the first time we've seen a pendant. We've had, like, the bracelets. We've had pearls aplenty. We've had some sapphires. But the pendant. William Grimish, uh, Grimmist. What? Grimished? He Grimished. Sean Connery died today. And, like, I keep, like, th thinking things in his accent. Like, William Grimished. The pendant was far too garish for his taste. Trends in fashion were always transitory, but he hoped this particular one passed quickly. <laughs> Man, me too. Ugh. That is a bit much. Since it's not magical, we don't need it. So what that is, is a place for us to sell gemstones if we did not already have one. And if there is some kind of side quest or something that pops up that says, Hey, uh, I need a sapphire real quick. We can go grab one, I guess. Ooh, the sign over the door read, Fresh Fruits and Vegetables, Homegrown, Natural, and Organic. Alright, so... I want to bask in this for just a moment, because remember that this game was made in, like, 1997? So, yes, people have cared for... See, exactly. People have cared for a while about, you know, things like, is my food organic? Is there pesticide on it? Is it a GMO? But that really is a mid-2000s craze. Like, that's when it really picked up and, and became a mainstream thing and, like, Whole Foods and stuff happened. So it's, it's doubly funny, first of all, that this this old game kind of like read the future and then also this is a medieval fantasy world and whatever you see something like this that is a very modern concern or conceit um kind of mocked or nodded to or just just pasted over top of the game and there is no acknowledgement whatsoever that it's kind of weird that always makes it hysterically funny. Natural and organic. The only way this could be funny here is if it actually said non-GMO. Um, Kaylin's mouth watered. Let's check this one out. I love some food that doesn't taste like it's been packed next to my socks for a week. The cottage was set up as a combination shop and greenhouse. Potted flowers and herbs filled the countertops. 
A woman puttered among the pots, planting seedlings in rich, moist soil. She looked up, pleased to see new customers. Yes? May I help you? We'd like to purchase some produce, please, Kaylin said eagerly, her mouth already watering for a ripe tomato or a luscious peach. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, dear. Nothing's right just now. It's been a simply terrible season, what with the drought and all. Kaylin tried to ignore the disappointed grumbling in her belly. I see. We're traveling and need to keep replenishing our supplies before they spoil. Do you have any food to sell at all? Honestly, no. But I can treat your fresh food to make it last longer. I only charge two burlas per day's worth of food. Ooh. Hey, no, that's really cool, because remember, I was just complaining about paying so much for rations, because this stuff spoils. So, if she can preserve this... Let me see. Do we need to hand her the food, or do we need to hand her the money? Here's one, like, iteration of or unit of bread. Let's see. Woman took the bundles of food. I'll have to dry these in the sun to preserve them. You can come back tomorrow afternoon to pick them up. Okay, well, we will definitely, like, still be here tomorrow because we haven't explored the whole village. Cool, 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 cool. I'm going to give her all of this food that would otherwise go bad and she can turn it into rations for fairly cheap. That is really cool. I love that. I wish that there were more of you around the game world. As the party stepped into the yard, they suddenly found themselves set upon by a horde of small children. Oh no, it's a CR5 encounter. The kids raced past and dove into the bushes. Two seconds later, three more children came into the yard, obviously looking for their playmates. Kaelin grabbed the arm of the largest boy to get his attention. Are you playing hide and see... Uh, hide and search? Well, my brain filled that in before I got to it. That's like card wolf. Hide and search... No, that's for babies. The boy brandished his child-sized bow. We're playing soldier and growth. When we find him, we're gonna kill him dead. I take it that you're a soldier. You bet. We make the little kids play the growth. Let them sneak through the bushes all they want. We can find them no matter where they are. Hey, ouch, that hurt. The boy rubs his arm where Kalen pinched him. Oh, sorry. Guess I just got caught up in the excitement. Kaylin turned to her companions. <laughs> if that's what the kids are like, maybe I shouldn't meet the parents. Don't think I could be held accountable. Oh yeah, because she's friends with the Grolf. We've found that out in uh, the last episode. William nodded. All right. We'll take a pass on this house for their sakes. I don't want to be responsible for making any orphans. Hmm. Fair enough. It's not enough to not be racist. You have to be anti-racist. Message. A skinny man with a nervous twitch was delighted to see them. Okay, so apparently all of the interesting people that we could potentially have met uh, back in Lavosha uh, are, are here instead because this entire town has been nothing but like long conversations and people with faces. So... We do stand, Kaylin. <clears throat> Step right inside, my friends. You shut up just in time. I've just become privy to some special information. Some very special information. We're definitely interested in very special information, said Aaron. William rolled his eyes. You'll want to listen closely to what I have to say. Now, here is a map of the coast around Ormead. I've lived here all my life, and I know every inch of it like the back of my head. William interrupted. Don't you mean the back of your hand? Exactly. Now, I've received confidential information from a high-ranking official in the Antaran Navy. William interrupted again. If it's so confidential, why are you telling us? I have special clearance. Now, if you'll let me continue... I'm putting together an expedition to recover the wreck of the Cyrilin. As you know, its treasures are legendary. It's worth incalculable. 
all those people who searched near Reva, where the ship was named and launched, way off. If I told you the names of the people who were interested, very interested in funding this project, you would be amazed. William interrupted. So, amaze me. At this point, uh, those parties wish to remain anonymous. We're only offering this chance to a select few to keep profits high, you understand. Now, for a mere 150 barrels, I can give you a 10% share in whatever we find after taxes and the overhead are deducted, of course. Oh, of course, said William. Aaron was annoyed. Why do you always have to be so cynical, William? Are you excited about the possibility of recovering the Cyrillin after all these years? Well, there could be anything down there. Gold, jewels, maybe even the skeleton of the Emperor's daughter. The man looked around nervously. The only thing is, I need an answer right away. The others are quite anxious to begin. We only have space for a few more investors. Are you in or out? Huh, huh. Well, okay, let's be real. This sounds like a scam. Um, I think William agrees that it sounds like a scam. On the other hand, the Cyrillin is that ship we are looking for information about for the, the guy at the tavern. Or not the tavern, but... um. Well, back in Lavosha, anyway. The building that looked like a tavern, but turned out just to be his house, I guess? Question mark? So, what do you think? We have the money to spend, which is great. It's always lovely to be able to say that, that we can just buy into this scheme. Do you think we should take a chance, and maybe this is a clue that we need for that side quest? Or should we pass? Keeping in mind, of course, that uh, there is still some treasure on the ground that we can sell to recover. That is true. Back in Midova, we did get scammed thanks to Aaron's enthusiasm and naivete. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, there's still there's floor cash basically back on the in the middle of the road at several of the um, <clears throat> slightly less populated intersections that we came through. Less populated now that we've have come through. All right, we'll try it out. Aaron reached into the money pouch before William could stop him. He handed over 150 burlas, saying, Now, uh, how should we contact you to collect? The man stuffed the coins into, the, into his bag. Oh, don't worry about that, lad. You'll know how to, we'll know how to find you, all right? You just go on about your business and leave it all to me. Hmm. The man left the cottage without so much as a handshake or a buy or leave. William turned on Aaron. That's the last we'll see of that 150 burlas, Aaron. Nice going. Aaron looked puzzled. But he said he'd tell us when they raised the ship. Don't you trust him? William grunted. Might trust him just a bit more if he'd remembered to ask our names before he took off with our money. Best let this be a lesson to you, Aaron. A lesson I hope you learn quickly. Hmm. That's fair. Now, did he give us anything? There's our insurance policy. There's that handkerchief. Handkerchief. Huh. Yep, I don't see any items. Aaron did not learn his lesson. No. <laughs> well, hmm. Yep. He's no longer interested in talking to us, so... Oh, well. Oh, okay, these are the racist children. Doodly doodly do do racist children. Okay, nobody's here. And is there anywhere else that we have not been? This was the road into town. Did we check this place out? Okay. Nobody. What's that? This is the... Yeah, this is the greenhouse. Okay, so we need to go this way. That's the house we have not been in. Um, you know, I'm not actually sure. We should try. Because we have attempted to fish in rivers and lakes, I think. But not really the ocean. Let's find out. Okay. 
Who is this fellow? An eerie glow lit the cottage from within. Aaron tapped cautiously, and the light blinked out, then came back on, then gradually died away. Aaron heard a high-pitched voice swearing vigorously, and the door opened to reveal a scrawny old man in a white robe. Why do you people always disturb me when I'm working? Aaron ventured a guess. Excuse me, sir, but are you a mage? Oh, what else do I look like, a Chalin Otter Spaniel? What do you want? I haven't got all day. I, I, I'm a mage too, sir. Or at least, I will be. The crabby old man was not impressed. Oh, really? My stars, isn't that fascinating? And did you come all the way from wherever you're from just to tell me that, hmm? Aaron made one more attempt. There's so much I don't know, sir. I'd sure like to learn from an experienced mage, someone who has control of the magical forces, someone with vast skill and power. Someone like you, for instance. Yeah, you know, the Chalin Otter Spaniel, right? Everybody knows about Chalin Otter Spaniels. Psh. The old mage preened under Aaron's flattery. Uh, yes, uh, well, no doubt you would, but it takes years. Dedication? Sacrifices. Aaron cut in. I can pay you well for your time. Oh, why didn't you say so in the first place, young man? The mage rubbed his hands together. Let's get started. Uh, <laughs> what will it cost me to learn to raise the dead? Also, I'd like to know how to walk on rainbows and become invisible, Aaron asked, counting his money. God. Honestly, the only three things that matter. I think the only thing not on this list is maybe flying or teleportation. The mage arched his eyebrow. Perhaps you'd like me to teach you how to turn lead into gold as well. Aaron caught the man's tone just before eagerly agreeing. Oh, well, what can you teach me? I can train you in the application of illuminescence the non-localization of forces, or the primordial act of creation itself. Any of them will stand you in good stead throughout your career, but I only have time to train you in one, and it'll cost you a hundred burlas. Okay, well, this is going to be another, like, five points in a magic skill, so we have to train. Okay, so here we go. We can choose area magic, create magic, or light magic. Which do you think we should choose? Because all three of those are currently at our, what for right now is our maximum cap of 40 points. Because the only thing we have that isn't at maximum um, is uh, self and ally and resist. Yeah? I can see all of them. Because I, I would love like a fireball spell, which is probably going to be area, but... I mean, like, all of them are going to be useful. Create? All right, let's do create. I'm interested to see what else we can do with this as well. Like, maybe, will we be able to create items at higher levels? Will we be able to, I don't know, conjure wet stones and, uh, and armorer's hammers? Or perhaps there's a repair item spell. Or a create food spell. That could be really useful. The mage spent the next hour teaching Aaron how to use magic to create tangible objects and effects. When they finished, Aaron felt more confident in that area of his knowledge. Well, I should hope so. Alright, hey, check it out. His spell casting went up to 41, even though his maximum is 40. Um, that is, of course, because... Your spell casting ability... Um, is the average of all of your spellcasting skills. So what that means is that now his create is... Ooh, we got seven points from that, not five. We got seven, y'all. That is amazing. Okay, so since we most of these are maxed out at 40, but we have three of them that are higher than that, so that is pulling up the average from where self-ally and resist are pulling it down. So when these get up to maximum two, our average is probably going to go up some more. And we didn't gain access to a new spell. Unfortunate. Still not mad about it. 
That was definitely a hundred burlas well spent. Uh, now, let's see. Speaking of well spent, let's see if our time will be well spent. Doing a little foraging. Now, his is already at 43, so she is the one for whom it matters. Let's see. Give her the fishing rods. Hiya! Uh, where is a good spot to fish? Kalen? T tell me that. You tell me. That is disappointing. Okay, we got another coach house. They will take us to Cardone. Cardone. For 200 burlas. No, for 200 burlas, I will freaking walk to Cardone. Hello? Hello, free treasure chest. Hello. Hmm, a large locked normal chest. There are no obvious traps. Okay, well, since it is locked... Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Hey, first try. Uh, hmm. You know what? Okay, uh, that fellow that we met on the road, what was his name, Mackie? He would not purchase armor. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking that, like, like, oh, gee, thanks, game. Um, he would not purchase armor, but he would purchase weapons, and he will purchase, like, random supplies. So let me step over here and clear a little bit out of our inventory. If nothing else, we can sell him these extra fishing rods. Also, we can sell him those because he literally will buy all of that and it's lying right there. Hello again, fellow wanderers. Yes, yes, yes. Do you Yes, let us browse your wares. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, I won't buy that. Fishing rods. We can sell this longsword. It's not blessed. We don't need it. What? What? But you have... What? Uh, what? <laughs> uh. So I gave that whole speech about how he'll probably buy anything because if a merchant sells a category of item, they will buy all items in that category. And he has proven me wrong at every turn. He sells shields but won't buy armor. He sells short swords but won't buy long swords. Like... What is your problem, Mackie? I'm starting to feel like you were put here to make my life harder instead of easier. Okay, well... Safe journey, Mackie. Dang it. I'm gonna use these dead bodies to store all of this stuff that we don't need right now because it's taking up a lot of inventory space. And we are already, like, heavy with... Armorers, hammers, and whetstones. I go back over here. I'm gonna get that chaling cutlass as well. Uh, here we go. We will grab that. We will take it over there too, and that way we will know that the chest is for sure empty. That's right. Exactly. If he's going to be difficult, then we are going to be efficient. Oh, check that out. Oh, nope, there he is. We just walked past him. I guess he doesn't, he's not in the dark. I thought he had moved on because we didn't see him. And so it's like he was going to be traveling with his cart. But I think what it is, is he's only out in the daytime. So I walked past him in the dark and then it turned light and I turned around and he was like right there. Okay, so we know all of our stuff is um, in that pile of corpses if we need it. We could come back for it, no problem. And this chest is empty. Alright, well. Let's give a save. More trees in the middle of nowhere. Is there a spot where we can diggy diggy hole? No? Okay. 
Anything interesting on the beach? No. Party's getting tired and should rest soon. Oh, well, you know what? That's fine because we need to go back, actually, and uh, pick up those new rations that we purchased from the greenhouse. Hey, the woman handed over the bundles. Kayla noticed they were much lighter than before. Here are your dried rations. Enjoy. Kaylin tasted a bit of meat. Tough, she grumbled. Then, seeing the look on the woman's face, she added, But, well preserved. Thanks. Ooh, close one, Kaylin. That lady's doing you a favor. Yes, we would like to rest. There we go. Cool. So, their stamina and health, I think, is going up a little bit, but not a whole lot. Which is fine, because, um, I actually kind of like that. It's sort of... I, I prefer to have the same number of resources, even if that's a low number, and then to have the strategy element of using like equipment and abilities to preserve that resource or to make more efficient use of it. So like we've had a lot of armor upgrades, we have the blessed armor now, we have defensive spells, we have better attack spells to mitigate damage by killing enemies before they can hurt us, we have better weaponry, our skills are higher, so it's actually okay if our health... oh, Trarangs, gross. Um, if our health and stamina doesn't go up a whole lot, because we are still taking, like, drastically reduced damage, we're killing enemies faster for the most part, we're not getting ambushed, and so on. It's kind of like, um... I'm gonna use Blazing Barricade here, because they, they seem to love standing in it, so... We'll start with... Uh, we'll start with ten. go but uh they uh it's it's like power creep in anime oh that was a waste of a girl pharaoh dang it you know like it's a lot more interesting if the protagonists just learn new and interesting ways to apply the powers they already have than constantly getting new powers because once you get to the point where people are spirit bombing entire planets um <sighs> Like, there's not really anywhere to go from there that's, like, it, it's hard to get bigger than that and still keep my interest. You hear me, Shonen Anime? Oh, yeah, you noticed that. They absolutely do. When you touch the different gems to spend different amounts of stamina, they do, in fact... Uh, actually have a rising scale. Okay, let's see. I don't think... Oh, she can hit that guy. Uh, swing and a miss, both times. Great job, guys. It's okay, the Grulf arrows are precious, but the regular arrows, at least, we can now... We're in a place where we can afford to shoot some of them. Her archery skill cannot increase anymore, at least not at the moment. But, like, it, they're no longer a finite resource, so we can afford to spend some arrows. All right. Time to sword these monkeys. Keep his aggro off of Aaron. Hey, we're doing pretty good, because these things hit really hard, so... There we go, three of them down. Nice. I am very satisfied with that battle. We spent multiple or, or minimal stamina and didn't take any damage, I don't think, at all, actually. Did we take any? I don't think we got hit. But well, we will find out here and now because 
Well, I know Aaron didn't get hit. 95? Yeah, I don't think she did either. No, yeah, okay. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Nothing over there. Nothing over here. I hope it doesn't make you, like, motion sick or nauseous as I just, like, oh. weave back and forth. I worry about doing that to people, which is one of the reasons why I kind of, like, go and then stop and then turn. Because it is very fluid if I just serpentine back and forth. So... Uh, yeah. I, I prefer that a lot more because we do love when number go up, but only to a certain point. And it's kind of like my theory or my, my feelings on um, magic items in like Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I've said this before on the stream, um, but I actually... I, I don't like the way that settings like Pathfinder, for example, really handle magic items, where there's a built-in assumption in the game that if you do not have a certain level of magic at certain milestones within the game, then, um, like, you are behind somehow, and you're going to find yourself at a disadvantage. Versus in a game like 5th uh, edition Dungeons & Dragons, where magic items are precious, they are not necessary to uh, win the game, to be good at it, to successfully complete a campaign or an adventure. Um, they're difficult to sell, and they make a huge impact, which is really important. Like, a plus one dagger is the kind of weapon where you might keep it literally throughout the entire lifetime of your character, because it will make a meaningful difference for that entire lifetime and that's great that's what i want out of tre uh, out of my magic items because it makes them feel like treasure they feel like loot instead of just feeling like um bearers bonds like i have so many plus one swords i'm literally throwing them away uh because i i it's gonna up my encumbrance to carry them all and then I'm gonna have to take them back to town and I'm just gonna liquidate them into cash anyway so that I can buy different, better magic items that I actually want because everyone already has a plus two longsword. Why do I need all these plus one longswords? So it's a very similar principle. Um, I would I would rather have scarcer and more interesting resource. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I would rather have scarcer and more interesting resources and have to manage those resources than to have an infinite supply of boring resources that are just the same thing over and over again that they, because of their quantity, they kind of lose their quality and it becomes tedious to manage them um, instead of rewarding to find them and to engage with them and interact with them. Okay, did you get hit or was it... Let's see. I'm going to let her repair the armor, like I said. Not yours. Was it William? Okay. Huh. I don't know if her skill's just not high enough. Let me see if I can stack those. Ye no. Okay. I think one of you said this, and I think you're right. I was thinking of these as stacks of items, like buying a lot of 14 armorer's hammers. I don't think that's correct. I think that y'all were right, and this is like an armorer's hammer with 14 uses. Like, you can sharpen a sword with one whetstone 14 times before the whetstone is used up. Okay, well, hmm. Well, then, in that case, speaking of whetstones, we know that we did for sure use our swords. See, I, it looks like she got hit. Well, it's not that big of a deal. We'll have to repair our armor again at some point. Okay. Raven. Or Ravenne. This is another temple. I'm starting to wonder if maybe the shapes of them indicate the god that they belong to, because the temple of Kor that we um, visited, I think, looked was the same shape as the one in Espreza. Yeah, see, I'm glad y'all agree. I, I feel like 
Um, you know, if, if you're in a setting like 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, again, you know, as an example, where like a, a plus one bow um, makes a huge tangible difference for your play experience, then that means that if you add a little description to it and it becomes a part of the adventure and it becomes something where like you you gain memorable experiences out of it because that plus one bonus caused you to succeed at a, an important role that you otherwise might have failed or in the case of betrayal and antara you know having our blessed swords allowed us to deal that one hit point more of damage to a boss monster that almost took us out then that's a lot more impressive and cool and then like you're going to name that magic item you're going to think of it as part of the character's identity it's going to be important to you versus you know if you can just buy plus one bows and arrows in shops and they don't mean anything then it cheapens the whole experience of having enchanted weaponry as a whole and speaking of holes this building doesn't seem to be anything except full of holes which is disappointing this building's got stained glass windows though i'm wondering if maybe that's like a rundown old church and this is like the shrine that's left of it or something hmm let's find out yeah, exactly. That too. Like, your character is going to grow differently if you have a, 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 a plus two longsword that makes a huge difference versus in a game, you know, a setting like Pathfinder, first edition. Um, if everybody does not have plus one weapons and armor by at least fifth level, prob preferably fourth, y'all are just kind of screwed. So they're not, they're important for your success, but not in a meaningful way. It's more in like, you are penalized if number don't go up. So, the sunlight hit the sign, splintering into a myriad of rainbows. Dell stained glass, Red William. <laughs> but of course. The party entered to see Dell working at a long table, arranging blue and green glass on a paper pattern. They watched as he etched a curve, then gently tapped the glass until it cracked along the mark. William moved in closer. This is beautiful. Are you making a window? Yeah, exactly. Then that, and I think that's the way to think of it is I would rather feel like having a magic item is a useful and cool and interesting reward uh, that pulls me forward in the story and the gaming experience versus feeling as though I am being punished for everyone not having a magic item equipped to every single slot. Which is, you know, that that's the negative experience. I, I would rather have positive reinforcement uh, for something that's not required than to have negative reinforcement for something that is required. And then it makes me feel like I suck at the game if I'm not meeting the, the quota. Dell looked up, pleased. <clears throat> yes, for the new Chapel of Henne. This is the center panel in a triptych representing the three basic tenets of the children's philosophy. Destiny, luck, and inspiration. As you can see, luck is symbolized by the fisherman who casts into unknown waters in the hope of catching his supper, and is always disappointed, I say, as someone who has only fished up a shovel once. William admired the work in progress. You've made the water look so realistic. I practically expect it to move. Dell grinned. Thank you. This one is turning out rather well, isn't it? I'm glad I got this commission. The children have been fun to work for. They're allowing me lots of artistic freedom, and core did they have money to spend. Well, we look forward to seeing your windows once they're installed. Dell waved farewell. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so I feel like this is going to be something we're going to come back to, so I guess that is a chapel of Henne, probably. And it's like either under construction is why it looks like that or it's run down and they're repairing and rebuilding it so he's installing new windows okay that's cool so that means maybe um when we come back in another later chapter like in chapter three or four or five um it may be repaired and there may be an operative church there okay they will take us to lavosha for 225 burlas no thank you uh it looks like the whole town, okay, is kind of branching off on the east path here. All right, then. Uh, let's do the north path first. 
Hey, okay. We can talk to that guy. Okay, and again, this this is a pub, not an inn. So we're going to be able to buy food here, but we're not going to be able to rest. We will have to sleep in the street. Uh-huh, okay, this is just a gambler. Unfortunate, because I saw the shop placard here, or shingle, like, literally just as the crickets and cicadas started up to where we couldn't go shopping because they were suddenly closed. The shops are, the shops are closed. Inside, children tossed a potato around a circle. With each toss, they sang a rhyme, then took a step backwards. The ring continued to grow until someone dropped the potato, then all the children laughed and started again. The companions stopped to watch for a while. Oh, that's a cute game. Aaron reminisced. I used to play this when I was a child. William shushed him. I want to hear what they're singing. A coin for the beggar, a jewel for the thief, a sword for the soldier, a robe for the priest. A pen for the poet, a ring for the Jaeger, a snare for the trapper, a pan for the baker, a forge for the blacksmith, a glass for the barman, a bow for the hunter, a plow for the farmhand, a shop for the merchant, a ship for the sailor, a bribe for the chiron, a pin for the tailor, a coach for the noble, a drink for the joyman, a post for the consul, a game to begin again. Hmm. The children tossed the potato and started over again, as excited as they were the last time. Hmm. Well, that's cute. Okay, nobody in this house. Uh, oh, front door. What about this one? This almost looks like a shop with the sign over it, but it tisn't. Tisn't. It taint. Hey, Michelle's Goods. Hello, Michelle. Do you have anything that we can pick up off of your floor or out of your garbage for the low, low cost of free? It doesn't look like it. We can't talk to your sole other customer, so we will talk to you. Hey, you sell arrows. I like that in a woman. And, hmm. A Grulf shield. Well, Grulf arrows are better. I wonder if Grulf shields are better. The ring dude's riddle. Ah. Uh, oh, um, what, what was his name? Um, Mage Chillblain? Was that it? Would would that have anything to do with his riddle? Um. Hmm. I maybe. That's worth thinking about. Okay. Well, let's uh. Let's find out. Okay. We don't have anything to sell. Let me go back. Maybe that's that's a good thought. That's a very good thought. I will go back and investigate. Okay, let's see. If the Grulf were finding limited acceptance among humans, their incredible woodwork was another story. Originally created as ceremonial gear, the Grulf themselves abhorred violence. The spectacular detailing and relative imperviousness, imperviousness of their hardwood shields made them eagerly sought within the Empire. Okay, so 15% protection, 25 hardness. How does that, whoops, how does that compare? 10% and 20, so it's definitely better than the small shield. Is it better than the banded shield? Hardness, 18. Protection, 9%. Now, we know because the condition is at 48. We know that its maximum protection is better than 9. But its hardness is still 18, which is inferior to this. And, of course, it's not at 100%. So, honestly, I say that's a pretty good buy. Don't think I can carry anything more. Well, you're right. Okay, um... Well, it doesn't really matter who buys it, does it? I'm gonna buy two of them. One for each. There we go. And I will still have to move something. Here. 
but that should be enough room to get that over there onto him. Excellent. Hey. Really? Wow. Okay. Hmm. Mm okay. Mm. Dislike. Okay, I guess he sells only wooden shields and won't buy metal ones. She. Apologies. Okay, well, uh, yeah, no harm done. We'll hang on to them for a while and then we will throw them in a pile of something or... It, we're gonna have to go back around to Cardone to check out that riddle anyway, so uh, we can put it in our handy pile of corpses just outside of Ormede. Okay, nobody interesting in there. Ooh. 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 A museum, you say? How interesting. Cool. Uh, shh. Shh. Excuse me. Is the museum open? Yes, we're open. Come in. Come in. Well. Interesting. Hmm. This is neat. Listen, um, museums and libraries are a lot closer than you might think. So, the answer is yes. This is a very impressive collection. I don't know much about art, but these paintings look very old. Oh my, yes. These are all originals, some dating all the way back before the migration. When the Gruul forced the humans to flee, saving artwork wasn't a high priority. Not much from that period survived, but we have a representative collection. We also have a number of pieces from Chael and Mayrot. A few are from even further away than that, from lands across the sea. Interesting. And we're learning a little bit more about the world's history, too, because we know that the Gruulf abhor violence, but we also know that that is something that has changed in their culture, and they used to be a lot more savage and warlike. So apparently there was a war between Gruulf and humans at some point, and that led to the migration. Oh, and now we can ask about acquisitions. Does that mean that we could bring them artwork? Is that another side quest? Hmm. As you no doubt recognize, this is a bust of Emperor Valorian I, the founder of the Antaran Empire. Sculpted during his lifetime, it is said to be a remarkable likeness, though, as you can see, it suffered damage before coming into the museum's care. Hmm. Okay, Firewolf. I guess that's that thing back there. The Firewolf is an impressive creature, isn't it? It's a magical hybrid resulting from the mating of an Antaran wolf with an Aetherian creature. I hear they can actually breathe fireballs, though I'm relieved to say I never saw this for myself. A wolf that can breathe fireballs. I'm not looking forward to inevitably fighting those. On the other hand, we do have the Winter's Kiss spell. Hey! So, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like, oh, yes, what a lovely creature. Such a beautiful piece of artwork. Watch out for those in the wild, though. <laughs> this drum and the other instruments are used in a Grulf dance. That dance is called the Karuf. Oh, is it really? That's Karuf with an F? Thank you so much. I'll be sure to update my reference material immediately. There's so little we know about the Grolf, and with this current atmosphere of distrust, it's so difficult to learn more. Hmm. Well, I like that she's interested, anyway. That Jaeger is a featured exhibit in our natural history collection. You should see the children's mouths drop open when they come across it for the first time. Okay, so, of course, because of the way that it's spelled, I've been calling it Jaeger. <laughs> um, so, Jaeger, and that's some kind of, like hunting cat, like a jaguar. This is a shard from the Mirror of Smoke and Dreams, one of the most amazing creations in the magical world. During the Age of Mages, seven of the greatest practitioners came together to spell the mirror into being. Our research shows that the original mirror was oval, approximately six feet tall and four feet wide. It was made from smoky crystal and set in a silver frame. 
appearing dark and dim to the typical human, it had an affinity for users of magical energy. What was it used for? By looking into the mirror, a mage could mentally contact another mage anywhere in the world. And with some expenditure of power, he could also send physical items through the glass to the contacted mage. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Huh. I wonder if that will be of use to us or if we might find other pieces. And yeah, yeah, it's not quite as impressive as a giant robot, but on the other hand, giant robots don't purr when you pet them and give them cuddles and treats. How did these originals survive the centuries? They were preserved against the elements in burial tombs where the air is cool and dry. In ancient times, chiefs and princes were buried with paintings and other belongings to recall the world left <laughs> behind in death. Sometimes miners break through the rock into these caverns discovering a window, as it were, into our past. Our prize is that piece over there, the only known portrait of Byra Madden. We believe it dates back to before the uprisings. The uprisings. Who is Byra Madden? Who was Byra Madden? Yes, thank Byra you. Byra Madden was a great mage during the first wave. For decades, his legendary feats of magic brought him abundant renown and fortune. Now, a mage of such power shouldn't be able to simply vanish off the face of the earth, but that's what Byron Madden did. During the uprisings, he disappeared without a trace. The people created a remarkable tomb as a memorial to his name. It was filled with many of Madden's possessions, items of incalculable value and power. Where is this fabulous tomb? That no one has ever discovered. Legend has it that shortly after its completion, the tomb itself vanished into thin air. Many over the centuries have sought for it in vain. A few even claim to have found it. But when they attempt to return with others, the exact location eludes them. Where do you think it is? Though my research has uncovered no evidence to support this, I somehow sense that Byra Madden and his tomb lie at the heart of the waste. It is a land of strange and awesome mystery created by a convergence of magical forces that no one has ever been able to explain. Of course, I could be wrong. In reality, Byra Madden's tomb could be in this very neighborhood, covered by a mudslide or submerged beneath a swamp. Hint, hint, perhaps, question mark? Hmm. So Byra Madden is Wizard Jesus, then. And just when the world needed him most, he vanished. How did the museum get all this old stuff? Most of it was donated by lords and ladies of the Empire. Over the years, we've had many generous patrons, including the Imperial family. When Empress Corlene first founded the Museum of Antiquities, becoming a patron was a mark of prestige. Jagers competed to best each other's contributions to Corlene's gift to posterity. Back then, the museum was staffed with docents by the dozens. Now there's just a handful of us and only a few of our treasures remain. Unfortunate. Okay, so uh, apparently, <laughs> just much like our own empire, uh, Antara doesn't really fund education in the sciences and the humanities the way that it should. Hmm. Disappointing. You see, when you make a fantasy world, you're supposed to make it better. Well, all of this is fascinating. Thank you for all the information. It was very interesting. We're having a lecture series on the artistry of Trakan nest building starting next week. You and your friends would be more than welcome. I think we're busy then, but we'll see. The Trakha, yes, I forgot about them too. Huh. Wanted to see if there is anything I might have missed. Wish we could interact with some of this stuff. Hmm. Well, this has been an extremely cool little diversion. Hmm. Well. Okay, um... That's all very, very cool. And I appreciate that they put it in the game. I did check this house. Yes. Okay, so we've got one more building over here. A gaunt man with intense eyes opened the door. Are you collecting donations for the chapel? Kaelin eyed the money bag in the man's hand. 
Why, yes. Yes, we are. William interrupted. No, sir. Not really. That's just her little joke. The man glared at Caitlin. That the hand of Henne has chosen Raven for the new chapel of Henne is nothing to joke about. Caitlin looked past the man into his house. A cheap, though not small, portrait of the revered hand hung in a prominent spot on the wall. Aaron dubiously looked over the man's dirty clothes and unkempt hair. You aren't a child of Henne yourself, are you? No. I know I am not worthy to join their enlightened ranks. But I practice Henna's teachings carefully, striving each day to follow the example set by the exalted hand. If only I had always done so. If I may ask, as a fellow searcher, what brought about your recent devotion? The realization that my lack of faith caused my wife's death. The man beat his chest in penitence. She was a devout believer, but I scoffed and called it nonsense. Nothing more than bedtime stories for children. And she took sick with the pox. More than anything, she wished to travel to the chapel in Tekoro for a blessing. She was convinced that would make her well again. The man drew a deep, ragged breath. Damn fool that I am. I didn't listen. I insisted she stay home where I could care for her. Care for her body, yes, but not for her soul. She died, along with dozens of other non-believers in this town. Kalen was blunt. Do you truly believe your wife would be alive if you'd allowed her to travel for miles in the cold and rain, sleep in drafty inns, and eat the coarse food of the road? Hannah's grace is infinite beyond such trivial considerations. Didn't the high brother Shoan, revered hand of Henne before high brother Mar, sacrifice himself, dying of the pox, so that we would understand the diseases drawn to the impurities in even the most pious among us? Kalen retorted, But why would Shoan choose to die if he had the power to cure himself as well as his believers? The man's face reddened. Blasphemy, girl! Be gone from this house, non-believers! The door slammed. William laughed. <laughs> That's our Kalen. Always making friends and influencing people. She snorted. I just have no patience for those who choose to rationalize reality with a cause and effect God. Yeah, you go, girl. Damn. Kalen calling people out. Diggy diggy ho. Hey, we haven't seen these in a long time. A dervish disc. Cool. We can sell Got those. Another one. Well, hey. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I mean, especially because, like, you've been around for a while. Got another one. Oh, well, hey now. Goodness gracious. The riches are pouring in. If I known that you guys were gonna, like, Betrayal and Antara this much, I, I would have made it my first stream instead of Might and Magic 6. <laughs> hey. Thank you, though, but seriously, like, that makes my day, my week, my month and my year, really, considering that, like, what 2020 has been. See? October really is the month that keeps giving. I... October has already proven in 2020 to be, like, that person who shows up and just does all the work in the group project. Huh. <sighs> well, this is a wonderful way for the month to end. That is for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Pixel appreciates it. And let's see, I would also appreciate it if I could find uh, the creepy singing children. Here we go. Okay, I have, I have a notepad. Man, that is, that's a long walk, but we can make it. Let's have that be the end of this stream. Let's see, back this way. 
Follow the road. Oh, wait a minute. Am I going the right? Oh, <laughs> I got turned around and went north. Foolish. The potato poem. Yeah, see, because... Oh, hey, something's wrong with your house, my guy. Okay, do we have any treasures or anything? Okay, well, that's we got shields for when we get to Ormeid. Huh, I wonder if there will be a spell that makes you travel faster while spending less time. That would probably be difficult to program in an old game like this, but wouldn't it be great if there was some kind of, like, hasted traveling spell? Or just a teleportation spell, like, where is my town portal? No, thankfully my roof does not look like that. Although our neighbor's roof uh, does kind of look like that because he doesn't take great care of his home and there was a big storm recently. I mean, that's true. I could have taken the coach, but I, I'm trying to stay over a thousand burlas because sometimes stuff is expensive. Here we go. Or mead. I know that the parties are trying uh, needs to rest. Here. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Actually, oh, hey, his melee went up in one of those battles. There we go. 17 and 17. We're doing pretty good. Still don't have any new spells unlocked, but we'll get there. And here is our handy dandy pile of corpses. We'll just throw those in there. There we go. Do we have anything else that needs to be stored that way? No, I think we're good. All right. Thank you, corpses. Everybody thank the corpses, please. They're doing a good job. They are also important party members. I don't think that they contribute quite as much as Wide Potion, but Wide Potion doesn't have a carrying capacity. Alright, what town is that? That's Lavosha, I think. So we have come back round full circle. Yeah, this is... Yeah, that's Lavosha. Okay, so one more stop. Let's head on up north one more town and we know because we came out of Cardone that uh, it is not very far from Lavosha at all you can basically see Lavosha from Cardone so it'll be like right there yeah, I know but it's right there I don't want to rest okay God. there see it's right there there's an in and everything game let me live. Alright, I think that this is the mage's house. There we go. Have you solved that riddle? If you know the answer, tell me now. The mage looked at Aaron with perhaps more intensity than the situation warranted. I don't remember if that's his voice or not. I know he had like an old man voice, so... He does look like Pope Francis, though. Wait, oh, oh, well, I didn't have to write any of that crap down. We just needed to hear the rhyme, I guess? He didn't repeat the riddle, but okay, but at least we had the clue. Okay, still, that's cool, that's cool. In that way, thank you, game. I will toss my notepad aside. I know that one, Aaron said excitedly. Glass! Aha! I should have known. You've done me a great service. And now, to show my thanks. Hmm. Mage Chillblain smiled wickedly and rubbed an onyx ring. A blast of wind hurled the group out the door, and Chillblain descended upon them. What? Is this a boss fight? Y'all, this is a random boss fight. 
uh, okay. Okay, um... Well... Fine, you know what? We got full stamina. You wanna be like that? Yes, good. They left a line of sight for Eren. Perfect. Perfect. Cast spells now, Pope Francis. Pope Francis the... the... dumb. Uh, let's give him a geyser. Boom. Why not? Full power. Full power. Wow. Are you... What? What? Okay, we cannot let that stand. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We're gonna get this guy. Huh-uh. Huh-uh. Yeah, that's- we are absolutely gonna load it and try to kill him. Okay, uh, here we go. Yeah, unseeing eye. That worked well again. I think what happened was I hit him too hard at once and he ran for it. So, here we go. We won't give him full power this time. Alright, let's see. Um, can we do... yeah. Yeah, we can do a, a Moonless Knight. Uh, increasing defense, but only reducing melee and spell accuracy. Movement is halved. That will keep him from getting away. Let's start with five phases. Because we don't want to impede them too much. Aha! You idiot, you buffoon! Wow, that literally lasted no time whatsoever. Okay, now we are going to hit him with uh, a full power geyser. There we go. That's right, Aaron is the only wizard here. It's Aaron. And there he is, folks. There we go, Mage Chillblain. Had no chill after all. Ooh. Okay, so he's wearing some chain mail. Some rations. Do you all see what I see? A ring, a ring. The shadow ring. Rings such as this weren't often seen in the Empire. Stealing them away from Chalin's spy masters tended to be more trouble than it was worth. In fact, one generally needed a Shadow Ring to sneak up on a Spymaster in the first place, which made acquiring one something of a paradox. Don't think I can carry anything more. Well, she can. There. I have no idea what a Shadow Ring is or what it does. Um. Let's see. Okay, you've got the chain mail. What can we... Um. Here, she can hold the shield stone for a minute. Now, she's wearing that Ring of the Ranger, so let's see. I'm guessing it's stealth. Yeah, I, that's what I think. I don't know why I went through all this to put it. I guess because he's a wizard, so I want to see. I want to put it on our wizard and see what it does. Shadow Ring. Okay. Oh, God, it is stealth because his stealth jumps 20 points. Holy crap. That almost maxed him out. Plus 20 to stealth. Jeez, so oh Pete. Well, and he is absolutely the one that needs it. So actually, I am kind of glad that I rearranged things because uh, his stealth is the lowest. So that brings him up almost even to everybody else. But the important thing is, much like with Kaylin's Ring of the Ranger, which gives her plus 15 to scouting, um... Like, the thing is, his actual stealth is still 19, so he can still rank it up 21 points. 
yeah, he might actually manage not to ruin an ambush for us now. Whew. See, this is more proof that magic items in this game really are treasure when you find them. Plus 15 to a skill, plus 20 to a skill. Or in the case of the Horn of uh, Henne here, I think it reduces his food consumption, which is also really great for a game like this where there's a survival element, a hunger element. Okay, well, either way, that was worth coming back for. Uh, screw this guy. Ha ha ha, you're dead, we're not, we've got a magic ring, and I will bid y'all adieu until the next episode of Betrayal and Antara. Thank you so much for being here and playing with me. Thank you for your help, your suggestions. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the subscriptions. Really appreciate it again. It is great to know that y'all uh, are enjoying yourselves enough to continue to be here for the foreseeable future. So once again, I will wish you a happy Halloween. Um, I will see you for the next episode of Betrayal in Antara, Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York and Miami time here in the U.S., when we will pick things up, and uh, we will head back around this way. I'll go back to Raven and save it there, and then we can head on to Millet and see what lies ahead for our party. And until then, as always... Thanks for playing.